construct this bridge, what I'm going to do is actually make the bridge be part of this roadway that comes across this village. And I'm just going to find the roadway. It's at this level here. And I'm going to have that bridge kind of span over to this place here. And I'm going to essentially dig out the part of the bridge that's where the water is going to flow under like a river. And I'm going to use one of our casting tubes to actually hand pack the sand on top of. So I want to make sure I found a good solid place on both sides and I create a notch for the hand packing to fit into. And I'm going to get a casting tube. And I'm going to say maybe this is the best size for this bridge. And I'm going to put this in here. You might use a bucket uh, where, where you're coming from. And I'm going to make sure I've got well saturated sand on either side. And then I'm going to soak the sand here so I can harvest it. And I'm actually going to start placing it on either side. make sure I keep my sand wet. Divert it to the ground quite well. Okay, so I carved a couple of blackouts for buildings over here that are part of the village. And we could do things like having the stairway from some of the buildings come down toward this bridge. We can put windows in here. We're obviously going to connect over this way and make this road more prominent. And then we'll trim some of the excess off. I'm thinking this is a little too thin. I want a few more inches of height on that and you'll see why later because I'm going to end up carving some of this away to get the casting bucket out.
All right, I'm starting to like that. So what we're gonna do is let it set for a few minutes. The sand is still a little mushy and we give it just a few minutes, it'll solidify. It'll be a lot better to carve into. I've wiggled it enough to where I think it's pretty strong. So with that, hey, this is set up pretty well now. I think it's gonna be strong enough to be able to remove the casting tube. So we're gonna use our hand trowel and we're literally gonna dig underneath this tube and try to drop it down as opposed to push it or pull it. If we can drop it down, it's a safer approach to doing this. We get it separated on top. I have this one tool that's really good for this. I'll get it. This tool is really good for this job. It's long and thin and narrow, and I can get it all the way through to help relieve the casting tube. It looks like it's getting ready to just fall right off any moment. And there it goes. So, bye bye casting tube and voila, you've got the structure of the bridge. Uh, we come back in and use some sand and pack in any place that we want to uh, kind of clean up the structure and We've got uh, the base of what this uh, bridge is gonna become. Now that we got this uh, bridge uh, casted up and, and formed, now we get to do the fun part, which is kind of give it some architecture. So I like to, to give my uh, bridges kind of a uh, keystone uh, look with a series of stones that come down that essentially give you the illusion that uh, actual um, bricks and, and stones were used to create this, uh, this bridge. And that's the illusion that I want to give in this design. So I'm gonna relieve some of the sand here that starts to do that. And I'm gonna um, create a smooth top and then I'm going to give the bridge some walls. These walls uh, <clears throat> are essentially there to help <clears throat> keep the people of our kingdom from falling into the river, which would be a good idea. So, uh, essentially this is the same technique we went over when we learned how to do the road. And it's just the road is essentially coming over the bridge. And we're gonna just kind of start at the top and push this down and then do the same thing coming this way. And essentially we now start to have the walls that would be necessary to keep our people from getting hurt and we also can crouch behind them and shoot arrows at the bad guys when the time needed this would be a good defensive point and uh, crossing And then I like to often dig the river lower 
underneath to make the bridge look higher. Essentially, we're getting more air this way. In contest, judges like that. They like to see that height and the, the air, which would be a, a good thing. this road sweeping around quite steeply this way which is part of the fun is wow how did they get up that road well in reality roads would not get this steep but in these fantasy castles we like to make them as steep as we can get them sometimes it really adds to the drama of the piece Got to a great place on this bridge where uh, it's really kind of down to the details now. It's, you know, what kind of uh, a balustrade might we want to put on this? I can see coming in here with a cap that, that represents maybe a top rail. And wouldn't it be fun to imply that maybe there were um, balusters? Um, that just gives you another level of detail. And I'm just kind of notching these in pretty quickly to give it a nice uh, rhythm and effect and make the bridge kind of a special moment instead of just blending into the road, which is more of a compositional uh, linking element. And this bridge should be a focal element that your eye gets drawn to. quick one and we'll use our handy brush the brush kind of heals all evils and now we have ourselves a pretty cool looking bridge that goes up into our village that eventually leads up to the top tower all right next uh, we'll probably want to take a look at how we do a waterfall and a lake and a pond um, if you like this one, uh, take a few minutes and go back and look at the uh, first three or four that we have in the series where we teach you how to do all these other elements that are already built. We have one on the tower and the village and the stair and the road. And if you like this video, smash the like button. And uh, remember to follow us and subscribe. And until next time, um, we'll see you um, in the next video. Thanks for joining. Bye. Thank you.